you know, I think about major disasters, natural disasters like hurricanes and utilities um, are very much on the front lines. They're first responders. Now, in the case of this outbreak, we're not talking about actual downed power lines or power outages. But in terms of the response, in terms of the fact that PS&G is one of those deemed critical infrastructure um, necessities, how are you responding? Well, thanks for having me on. And, and, I'll, I, and I, I'm happy to answer that. But before I do, I just want to first of all express my sympathies to anyone who's been affected by the virus and my thanks to the healthcare community that is out there on the front lines now, as well as our own employees who are making sure the electricity and natural gas is there for those healthcare providers to do their jobs. Well, as you said, we're used to major events, but there were two very distinctly different aspects associated with the pandemic. Number one is in a storm, after it's over, you have a period of damage assessment where you can understand the scale of the challenge in front of you. This one is a, is a bit more open-ended. So we really don't know the extent of the challenge ahead of us. Secondly, uh, yeah. throughout our industry, no matter how large the storm, we're always able to help each other. There's always some remote location that wasn't affected by the storm that can send employees over to assist the utility. But in this particular case, the entire industry is preparing for the potential for 20 to 40 percent absenteeism. So we're not able to help each other quite the same way we have in the past. Interesting. Um, you know, I, I think about just here in the New York metro area, the fact that you have these shelter in um, orders in place, so many people working from home, operating from home, their kids home. Um, and then on the flip side, you have so many businesses that are currently closed, events that have been canceled. How does that play out in terms of the electrical grid right now? And what does that mean in terms of energy usage overall? Yeah, so overall energy usage is down. There's been a shift away from our commercial customers, much more to our residential customers. But the grid is in very good shape from the point of view of being able to handle that shift. And as I said, the overall level is down. A slightly bigger challenge is making sure our supply chain is available to us in terms of personal protective equipment, because we do have customers going, we do have employees going into customer homes. We do have employees, even though we're trying to practice a safe distance in terms of our operations, who who do sometimes have to come in closer contact with each other. So having the right equipment uh, for the employees is something that we're focused on in terms of our supply chain. Ralph, I, I wanted to spend a little bit more time there because I, I did wonder with so many businesses shut down, so much equipment shut down, it would seem that the demand for power might be less overall. But talk more, if you will, about the kinds of challenges that you are facing what you would need should we have extreme weather in this area at the same time as we have this crisis going on? Well, let's see. So there you just hit a critical issue, and we are already beginning to plan for that. So right now, just given the fact that we're in kind of a shoulder month, it's not too cold, it's not too warm, weather is pretty uh, benign, we're able to get in pre into place the work practices that are very different than what we're accustomed to in response to the social distancing, uh, the the greater constraints on employees working from home or, or being able to report to a location in a more scheduled and planful way as opposed to all showing up at the same time. So we'll have all of that in place as we start to get into the warmer months where more volatile weather is not only possible but more than likely. Uh, because once once you do have a major storm season, then, then we will be stressing the system even further under these new work rules. So we're making sure we have all of our equipment in place. We're making sure we have as much uh, uh, testing in place as we possibly can in terms of being able to return people to work as soon as they're able to. Uh, so so, so uh, the, the challenges to come if this pandemic continues for the foreseeable future, which all predictions that we're aware of are saying uh, it to be the case, uh, will manifest themselves in the storm season. So, Ralph, in terms of the company's own workforce itself, whether it's control room operators that have a very specialized skill set, whether it's some of those workers that are out in the field right now, um, how are you mitigating the risks and, and looking to keep them safe while they continue to be able to do their jobs? Yes, yeah, so it varies from work type to work type. Uh, in the case of various control centers, we literally have broken ourselves into teams. So we make sure that different shifts are constantly working together so that we don't mix and match uh, people on uh, different teams so that if we do have uh, an exposure in one particular group, we still have another group that's able to carry the burden. 
Similarly, in terms of our field crews, it's not at all unusual under normal circumstances to, to have crews get mixed up between straight time and overtime. Well, we're not allowing that to happen. If you're on a crew on straight time, that's going to be the same crew that's got to work overtime if a job is incomplete. We are moving many of our people who are supporting customers, for example, in our call centers to working from home. So that they're not in part, they're not part of a large call center operation. Our trading floor, which is always buying natural gas and various fuels to make sure our power plants are operating, are working remotely through virtual private networks. So where we can physically remove people, we are. Where they have to work together, we're just trying to preserve a distance. And then we're making sure that we don't mix and match folks, but we, we preserve a consistency in terms of the groups working together should there be some exposure. Ralph, we had the CEOs of ServiceNow and PagerDuty on this hour talking about this crisis and how it might change the way customers think about technology deployment well into the future. The CEO of Microsoft a couple of days ago making a similar point. At this point, can you see areas where you think you're going to invest differently over the coming years because of this, whether it is in uh, software as a service whether it is in uh, mobile technology, different types of tools to help your workforce to be flexible in a crisis? Yeah, so, so the answer to that is emphatically yes. We're pretty sophisticated in terms of our ability to communicate with our employees and being able to diagnose the system the further upstream you go, the further you move away from the customer. Where, where candidly, New Jersey hasn't been particularly strong, which is where the vast majority of our customers are, uh, although we have about a third of them out on Long Island, is how smart are we at the customer premise? Do we have the technology, the metering technology, that can identify customer interruptions right down to the premise level? And, and yeah. equally important, especially given the economic challenges that we're going to be experiencing if we haven't already, our ability to just caution the customer yeah. about the consumption rate and whether or not they are, are maybe using more than they might normally be accustomed to.